I'm your man, ladies. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. You're right, sir. Slow your rotation, stellar fool. Planet kills star. Planet is killing a star? So here we are over at our good friends at the universe today. This exoplanet has prematurely aged its star by Shannon Hall on September the 18th, 2014. Young stars are wildly active. You mean like puberty? Do stars have puberty? Do stars have genitalia? If they did, would it be inside? Is that too weird of a question? Emitting huge eruptions. Whoa, yeah, okay. Why does celestial physics always have to be so sexual? Undertones, overtones, Deftones, tones, sensitive tones, emitting huge eruptions of charged particles from their surfaces. All right, let me try to read that sentence again in case I broke it up too much. Hot young stars are wildly active, emitting huge eruptions of charged particles from their surfaces. But as they age, they naturally become less active. Like people, their X-ray emission weakens and their rotation slows. So I guess instead of slow your roll, if you're trying to be hip and slangy with a star, you'd be like, slow your rotation, stellar fool. Astronomers have theorized that a hot Jupiter, long dash, a sizzling gas giant circling close to its host star, might be able to sustain a young star's activity, ultimately prolonging its youth. Earlier this year, two astronomers from the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics tested this hypothesis and found it true. But now, observations of a different system show the opposite effect, a planet that's causing its star to age much more quickly. The planet white Anglo-Saxon Protestant 18b has a mass roughly 10 times Jupiter's and circles its host star in less than 23 hours. So it's not exactly a classic hot Jupiter. I don't know, man, I thought hot Jupiter was a pretty new term. I'm not sure you can put classic in front of it. A sizzling gas giant whipping around its star because its characteristics are a little more drastic. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant dash 18b is an extreme exoplanet. It drinks Mountain Dew and likes to watch the X game, said lead author Ignacio Pilarotti of the National Institute for Astrophysics in Italy. Man, I liked it in um, Inglorious Bastards when Brad Pitt's character goes, it is one of the most massive hot Jupiters known and one of the closest to its host star. And these characteristics lead to unexpected behavior. Wow, a star slash sun exhibiting unexpected behavior? Who would have ever guessed that? The team thinks WASP-18 is 600 million years old. Of course they do. They carbon dated that shit and were like, bingo. They literally stood up with their bingo card and yelled bingo. Relatively young compared to our 5 billion year old sun. But when Pilarati and colleagues took a long look with NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory at the star, they didn't see any X-rays. A telltale sign the star is youthful. In fact, the observations show that the star is 100 times less active than it should be. Maybe it's got a disease. Are there star diseases? Are you saying that planets can be diseases to their star? Well, I guess it's like family, you know, the sun and the planets are like family, one big solar system family. And I think we can all agree family can at times be an emotional drain that seems to shorten your life. At times, we think the planet is aging the star by wreaking havoc on its innards. All right, so star has innards. Star liver. See, sun beer, man, star beer. I bet it's delicious. Said co-author Scott Wolk, who also worked on the previous study showing the opposite effect from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The researchers argue that tidal forces created by the gravitational pull of the massive planet might have disrupted the star's magnetic field generated by the motion of conductive plasma deep inside the star. It's possible the exoplanet significantly interfered with the upper layers of the convective zone, reducing any mixing of stellar material, and effectively canceled out the magnetic activity. And you know, the Earth's magnetic field is effing up big time, B. So magnetic fields are important. Gravity. The effects of tidal forces from the planet may also explain an unusually high amount of lithium seen in the star here we are now entertain us 
I feel stupid and contagious. Lithium is usually abundant in younger stars, but disappears over time as convection carries it further towards the star's center, where it's destroyed by nuclear reactions. So if there's less convection, as seems to be the case for WASP-18, then the lithium won't circulate towards the center of the star and instead will survive. Okay, A, how did a gas giant get so close to the star in the first place? B, a lot of times, most of the time, all the time, when science talks about the sun, our sun, soul, they talk about it like it's a car and that it's got enough fuel for 5 billion years. So the sun, the car, will just keep driving on the Milky Way Galaxy Highway for 5 billion years, no problem. And I was like, hey, wait, A, we got a star field. A star field is like a, a binary set of stars, except instead of two, you got like 17. And so we don't fully understand star relations and uh, how they hang out and stuff together, what they do when they fight. So A, that, that, that makes me think, hey, you know, maybe your 5 billion year thing is way off. It depends, you know. If you got a neutron star rolling in or, uh, you know, a giant green sun, a zillion times the size of our sun, uh, then maybe it won't last five billion years. You know, maybe a little neutron star is stealing all its hydrogen. Maybe the sun can hear what people say on Earth and it just gets tired of all of our whining and bitching and complaining and being angry. And it's like, that's it, I'm turning off. Can, can a star commit suicide? And thirdly, I always wonder, you have the sun and the planets that orbit around our sun. I've been trying to figure out, over time, we know that the moon is moving further and further away from Earth. I'm wondering, is Earth moving towards the sun or is Earth moving closer to the sun? over like a million years. I don't know. I'd like to know. You know, like, in this situation, maybe that giant hot Jupiter was born way out wherever the Jupiter was, way out wherever our Jupiter is, and then the sun slowly pulls it in. It's like, as it gets older, it has to pull the planets in to maintain the gravity connection. And then Roche limit, planet, planets pop. Unless the Jupiter planet absorbs the mass matter energy plasma from that star. And then the Jupiter, hot Jupiter becomes a hot sun, hot star. I said a lot of cool sciencey stuff there. It may or may not be right. And I probably sound like a dumbass saying it. But that doesn't take away from how genius my ideas are. All right. So let's high five around the world. Come on, internet, internet, high five right now. Brown dwarfs, green dwarfs, jelly dwarfs, hot Jupiters. Oh, yeah, it's almost holiday season. What are you going for this ha uh, Halloween? Me? I don't know. Okay. So either way, I think we can all agree I'm awesome. Sweet. Peace out. God bless everybody. Interesting times, party people. Planets moving in, moving out. Planets killing stars. I mean, it's usually the star that kills the planet. Why does everybody gotta kill everybody? Can't y'all just calm down and let's find common ground? Get along, please. Let's try it just once. Years ago, before the launch of NASA's Kepler spacecraft, astronomers were thrilled when they discovered a single planet. On February 26th, the Kepler team announced 715 to unveil a veritable bonanza of new worlds, 715 